What's up, everybody? It's your boy Deshaun here with an Average Joe Sports Quick Sports Blog. Hopefully, hopefully, at least we hope so. Um, going to talk a little bit of Husky men's basketball right now. Um, as we all know, about an hour ago, we all found out the news that we all knew was coming uh, over the course of the season that Lorenzo Romar has been, in fact, relieved of his duties as head basketball coach at the university, head head men's basketball coach uh, at the University of, of Washington. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there who are who are who are very you know excited and and almost bas basically throwing a lot of shade at Lorenzo Romar. Um, I'm more on the more compassionate side of it in the sense of I kind of view the end of Romar's career th this season at, at at the UW is kind of like you know a couple kind of going through the the last tail end of of, of a breakup or or divorce, whichever way you want to look at it, it's fine with me. Pick, pick the one that works best for you and go with it. Um, and uh, I think it was just after, after everything was said and done, smoke cleared. Both, I think both sides probably looked at it and said, "Well, we got to do what's best for for the program. We got to do what's best for the kids." Because you know, in college sports, we always think about the kids. Again, that's a whole other story for another time. We don't need to talk about how much money the NCAA and schools make off these kids, and they don't get they don't get a dime. Again, another story for another time. We'll get into that later, if if we if we want to do that. Um, but more more to the point. Again, I just felt that both sides probably came to some semblance of a mutual a, a, agreement. I don't think this is something that you know the the athletic department, the head of the athletic department, which I apologize, I don't have her name written down because I know this is her first first season here. As athletic as as a head AD at the University of Washington, so forgive me if I if I've forgotten her name, and you can feel free to correct me later. But <clears throat> I just think that you know sometimes sometimes when you when when uh, schools and universities have to fire a coach, especially coaches that have been around for long long periods of time and have done so much for said university, I think there's some semblance of of kind kind of kind of a strained compassion because you feel for the person, whereas at the same time, you know you want you want to sometimes let that person be able to kind of go out on, on their own terms. That's why I think this is more more mutual than 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 what probably people are are led led to believe in. But um, you know, again, this season he finished the season nine and uh, twenty two, which means he he won two games in the Pac twelve finished. Two and uh, two and twelve, yeah, yes. I'm sorry, two and sixteen in the Pac-12. I think it's sixteen games. I don't know how that how that happened, but uh, anyway, I think that that part might be. Wrong. He won two games in the Pac-12, basically. Uh, and uh, you know, it it wasn't the greatest season on 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 the face of the planet by by any stretch of the imagination, considering that his first season in two thousand three. Uh, he finished ten and seventeen, finishing five and thirteen, and then Pac Pac ten uh, uh, standings. So I mean, this is by you can literally say that this is by far his worst season at the University of Washington since he became uh, head coach here for, for 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 basketball. Now again, you know, we sit here and we a lot of people are going, you know, he was a terrible he was a terrible coach and. And whatnots, and we also go by the theory of you're only as good as as your last cut, <clears throat> as Michael Smith from his and hers would would say, a lot. Um, we gotta remember last season he finished nine and fifteen and finished at five hundred in the conference and went to the and went to the NIT, making taking that team to the second round of the NIT. Also, uh, four three years prior to that, also went to the NIT uh, again with an eighteen and sixteen record, and again. Uh, finishing at 500 in the in the pack in the pack 12 made it to the first round, you know, and and also and, you know not not to mention you know, not not to mention all, all the other all the other accolades that that he's done uh, with with the program. He literally had one bad season. If you really take into account all all the stuff that he's done, again, six NCAA tournament appearances within that three three Sweet Sixteens, three NIT appearances uh, of that. Uh, sec a second round, a second round exit, uh, first round exit, and a uh, NIT Final Four um, appearance again. So I mean, it's it's not like he did a terrible job as coach. Um, 
what really what really came down to it and what made uh, Rome, Coach Romar so great in the early 2000s and early, early to mid 2000s was the fact that he had players playing for three and four years. He didn't really have his first one and done. Really, I think was Spencer Hawes. Uh, you know that that year, and I and, and I and I really thought that Spencer Hawes should have stayed another season at at the UW because I felt that finally the dogs had a big man in the middle that can play defense and, and block a bunch of shots to get them past that, that, that sweet 16 point uh, in, in the tournament, but he decided to leave. And again, cause big men, especially if you're over seven feet, your career is only so, so long. Once your feet go out, once your knees go out, it's, it's pretty much done. So uh, uh, for, for you. So back then he didn't really have one and done. I think that, you know, as the one and done theme came in, you know, Roma was able to get all these great players, great local players as well to, you know, to, to stay, to stay in Washington and to stay on the West side of Washington, not going East to Gonzaga or Wazoo. I noticed I put Gonzaga ahead of Wazoo because let's face it, Gonzaga is the team to beat in the Northwest. Okay. That's, they are the Duke of the Northwest. Northwest. That's what I call them. Um, but, uh, but you know, but as the one and done regime really started to take hold, thanks a lot NBA. Uh, as that started to take hold, his particular coaching style didn't work with the one and done format. Romar needed uh, players to stay for you know two, three, and four years to really get to really get a hold of the system and to really gel as a cohesive unit. And when he had teams like that. You know, you had the seasons, you know, with Nate Robson, Brandon, Brandon Roy, uh, Bobby Jones, uh, Isaiah Thomas, and 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 the like. Uh, again, we can all go down the list. You all know the list. You, 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 all, you all just do. But, you know, you you were more inclined to have more seasons like that. And I think as, as the one and done really started to take hold, he wasn't able to do that. Now, again, on the flip side, you go, well, you see Coach Calipari – you see, you know, even even Mike Shashevsky to a certain degree, and 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 the likes, all and, and the big school, bigger schools being able to handle the one and done with relative ease. And yes, you can say that. And as you can say that, however, the the names I mentioned, that's 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 such a small small sampling of all the coaches in just in Division One college basketball period, but more specifically the Power Five conferences. And so, whereas Coach Cal is able to really get the job done, especially having a lot of success with one and duns, I always have akin to him, as in Coach Calipari, to more of a professional basketball coach that happens to be coaching college basketball. In the sense of he's able to get the maximum effort out of these kids to uh, – to, uh, to, to, to have consistent appearances in the NCAA tournament and have long runs in the NCAA tournament and, and being able to be able to reload behind that. Now, Coach Krzyzewski, he's been able to figure it out and, 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 and work the one and done system to his advantage. I even think that when it really started to take hold for him, his, his particular program started to suffer. He had a couple of years there where he was out in the first round he had a couple of years there where he almost didn't make the tournament, so I think he was able to to be able to better adjust his coach his coaching perspective and also his recruiting style to say, hey, you know, we want to get a you know one or two of these one and dones, but we also got to backload that with guys who are going to stay for three and four years to really round out the program, right? And I don't think that Romar was able to really really do that, you know, and again. We as fans were going, well, look at all the, 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 the top 10, top 100, top 50, you know, recruiting classes that Romar was able to get. And yet, you know, you know, we as a fan were saying, well, we, which again, we does not include people who don't, who aren't on the court playing the game. Again, you've heard me say that a lot. And I have to tell myself that a lot. So I'm not just calling you out. I'm calling me out as well. But we, the fans in this case, um, you know, are looking at the product and going, Got all these pick, got got all these you know recruits, and nothing to, and basically nothing to show for it except for in the last couple of years, except for one NIT appearance uh, with with get going out in the second round. And yes, 
that having those, having those top classes is great, but you also have to realize that that whole team is gone the following year. None of those players came back after after one year. Un under understand that. So basically, you have all these top recruiting classes and you get nothing to show for it. You don't get Brandon Roy. You don't you you don't get the class that Brandon Roy, uh, Will Conroy. Uh, 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 Nate, Nate Robinson. You don't, you don't get those big three with one and done. You don't get that. You don't get that kind of gelling and that consistency with one and done. You don't. Like that's 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 just a fact. You know, like you you don't get you don't get that 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 impressive run those impressive runs that we had those those six sweet those six NCAA tournament appearances. You know what I'm saying? You don't you don't get that. You don't get Sweet Sixteen. You don't get you don't get three sweet sixteens out of that. Like you just you just don't. With with I mean you can, but again you can't get that on a consistent basis. Is what I'm saying. So I mean I know and I know it sounds like I'm 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 caping for I'm caping for Lorenzo, Lorenzo Romar. I am, but at the same time I just want to make sure that we the fans also understand what he has done. A, a career like this at you know at at, at a mid major. The guy still has a job. They will look at this and go, you know what? He had one bad season. That's how they will look at it and go, you know what? He had a couple mediocre seasons. He had one real bad season. You know, we're gonna we're gonna have to replace some people on the coaching staff, but we're not gonna fire the head coach. We're gonna stay the course with this. But again, he's at a top. He's at at a at a middle tier top tier. Um, I, if that makes any sense at all, he's at a middle tier. Uh, 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 he's in a middle tier program in the Power Five conferences. I mean, UW has never really been, you know, the likes of of, of UCLA or in Arizona. You know, we we have our moments. Like the team as a whole and the program as a whole has its moments, but they 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 don't have that that cachet just yet. That, that's something that goes over the course of 25, 30 years of, of consistent NCAA tournaments and. And also, you know, winning tournaments as uh, winning winning it all as as well. Um, but again, I just want I just want the fans to really understand. I just want we as fans to to really understand it and, and take and take note to what to to what he did and how well and how well he actually did here at the University of Washington, taking a team that wasn't very good. I rem I remember being in be being in basketball band my my rookie year, uh I'd, it, it would have been my rookie year. They weren't they weren't a very good team. They were they, uh, I can't remember who the coach was before, uh Romar came in, but they weren't very good. I don't think they made I don't even think they qualified for the Pac-10 tournament at the time. And for the men at the time, you had to qualify just to make the tournament. I believe it was one through eight made the tournament, and so and I think now all twelve teams twelve teams do it. Um, so different times, uh, di different, different formats, but, uh, yeah, just, it, you know, if, again, you can go, you can go on the Google machine, type, type in Lorenzo Romar coaching records at, at, at the university of Washington. And you'll quickly see that, you know, he did a great job here. He really did. And if you think another school isn't going to pick him up, you're absolutely nuts. There's plenty of schools out there who could use a coach like Lorenzo Romar. And I think Lorenzo Romar will probably wind up at a at a smaller university, not like a Pepperdine or a St. Louis so much, but I think he'll wind up he'll he'll wind I think he'll wind up at a mid major somewhere, which I guess I true you go well that's Pepperdine or or St. Louis, but I, I think but I think he'll end up at a, at a slightly higher tier team, uh in some somewhere in like the Wichita State region. I'm not saying he'll coach at Wichita State. I'm just saying some somewhere in in that particular area and. Why that would play an advantage to him is because he'll be actually be able to uh, coach with players that are going to stay for three and four, possibly five years, because you know you can get that that extra year if you were injured or something. So I mean, he'll be able to 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 recruit team to recruit players to to that are going to fit his particular style. I think that's that's ultimately what I I am getting at. I hate the one and done format. I hate it. It's stupid. It's 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 screwed up college basketball for for everybody. Um, uh, I was hoping to make this short, but apparently I'm not. But so let's move ahead to what do we think is going to happen? Um, I don't know if they have any head coaching ideas as as of yet. Um, the people of people to replace 
uh, uh, Ro Romar. But um, for those of you out there who, and there's probably a very, it's very, 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 very small few. If some of you out there think that, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we're going to throw a bunch of money. We, as in the University of Washington, is going to throw, throw a truckload of money at Mark Few at Gonzaga. Get the fuck out of here. I, I don't like, I, I apologize for swearing on my vlog. I don't normally do that, but I need to say that for for a fact. Get the fuck out of here with that with, with that with that thought. That's a stupid thought. Mark Few is going to stay in Gonzaga. He's not going anywhere. This is not going to be a Chris Peterson sort of moment where we one, one coach leaves and then all of a sudden Mark Few is going to go, hey, University of Washington, that sounds like a great idea. Let's go down there. That's not going to happen. He's got a great thing going on in Spokane. He's going to continue to have that great thing going on in Spokane. And, and that's and that's going to be the end of it, plain and simple. So I don't know. I Personally, I don't really know who's available uh, at this time. It's really too early to tell. Tournament's still going on and and, and whatnot. But uh, I hope I hope that they get a coach that can also recruit, still stay recruit, still st recruit strongly in the Northwest, which means if they are out of towners, they're going to have to make sure that they staff themselves with the right with the right recruiting staff. And that's where I think uh, Will Conroy really could come in handy. Um, again, he knows the, he knows the area better than anybody, you know. So I think hopefully the new whomever the new coach is is going to be able to keep him on as 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 a recruiting tool. You need you need players. Sometimes you need those former players to be on your rec on your recruiting staff. You need that. Um, so again, I, I again it's I th I still think it's a, just a hair too early to to really. Um, say who the next head coach is going to be. I imagine we're going to find out about that in the next couple of days. So uh, that's my brief stand on how I feel about the Lorenzo Romar uh, firing. I don't think of it so much as a firing as more as more of a mutual agreement to just part ways uh, for, for the most part. And, uh, let's stop being fair. Let's stop being such fair weather fans. Again, you go ahead. Look, look it up. Wikipedia, look it up. You're going to see very, very quickly that he did a lot of great things here at the University of Washington. I, I also got to know him personally, you know, being in band. He would always, he would always come and talk to the band. He would always be taught, having conversations with Brad. You know, we would just, I would sometimes shoot the breeze with him. I would run into him on campus on occasion, you know, walking over to go either go help the drum majors or walk over to go uh, visit my fiance at work and stuff. So nice, nice guy. You know, he, I think again, he's still destined for great things. I just think the great things, the great things are going to happen someplace else. So, I wish him the best of luck uh, in, in the future in his future coaching endeavors because he's not he's not going to be you know jobless for very long that that I do promise. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's it for right now. I'm gonna get off my soapbox. I know I called called out a bunch of people for being fair weather fans. I'm also talking to myself as well, so I'm not just yelling at you. I'm also constantly reminding myself to not be that guy or or gal. So don't be that person. Uh, anyway, I'm out of here. Peace out. Go dogs. Let's get it done, Husky women. Let's do it. Uh, they're hosting, I believe, this weekend uh, at <clears throat> at Heckhead for the first round of the women's uh, college basketball tournament. Let's get it done. Final four. Let's go hopefully get to the final four and not have to face UConn. Peace out.